Namaste and welcome to this exciting episode of Satology Debunking Mythology. Satology means science of truth or study of truth. Opposite to that is mythology or mythology, which means science or study of fake lie or imagination. I am very grateful for to all of you for 2023, including our college programs. Thank you all and uh, encouraging me to write books and also receiving the books very warm-heartedly in US, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, Canada. And UK also, by the way. Some people have started ordering in UK also. I have a very special guest today. I love him, and I have never hidden that fact from any of you. And he was one of the first shows that we hosted, a celebrity. He's on the celebrity playlist also of Satology. And uh, he has done a wonderful contribution to a Bharatiya consciousness in India also. Author of Krishna series of books and also all religions are not the same. So hold on your questions and please ask this is a live show. Aap question pool sakte hain. Aap sabka bahut bahut swagat hai is show mein. Aur Sanjay Dikshi ji jud chukhe hain humare saath. Aur mein unko live le rao. So please welcome Sanjay Dikshi ji on Satology. Namaste. 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 Ah. Namaste, Aditi. Uh, I'm getting an echo, so I don't know what is the problem. It is the echo. Wait a minute. Mary side ye kuch hoga. Let me. Actually, our cell phone was on. Our dono side chal raha tha. Won't be on tha. So now I think it should be good. Okay. So, Sanjay Ji, first of all, tell me that what you have been reading in the book and the content you have been reading. I am still getting that, you know, that double thing. You can check your own side, there is no one here. I am not getting your echo. Yeah, I mean, I am getting, getting two audios. Yeah, not from here, because here it is silent in the studio. Mein. Can you hear me clearly? Mm, I don't know because I can I can hear you clearly, but uh, I'm getting two audios separated by a few seconds. Okay, let me just check. And I'm getting my own echo back. Yeah, I understand. Wo, jab do, uh, windows on hoga na, to wo ego aapko. Either cell phone or something else is on. Just check sometime. Yeah, never happens it's like this. Uh... Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll ask slowly so that you don't get it because uh, this audience ko bhi nahi aa hai. audience is also replying. आप लोग भी देखिए बताइए हां लोग बोल रहे youtube तो चालू नहीं है कहीं पर कोई विंडो ऑन है तो नहीं है तो ये सही है सो अच्छा अच्छा पहले विल गेट स्टार्टेड हियर मुझे आपका मैं सीधा पहले तो मैं आ, आपने उसमें एपिस्टेमोलॉजी पे आपने थोड़ा सा लिखा है पार्ट 1 में दी कंपैरिजन तो आ, तो मुझे ये बताइए कि ये जो बुक आप लिख रहे थे तो कौन से डिफरेंट फ्रेमवर्क्स में आपने कंपेयर किया सबको आ जी देखिए ये बुक में जो है वो जो कंपैरिजंस हैं ये मैं दिखाऊं ये देखिए दिस इज द बुक हां ये बुक है और इसमें ये जो पार्ट 1 है वो कंपैरिजन है और कंपैरिजन में डिफरेंट फ्रेमवर्क्स ये पहला चैप्टर है इस बुक का और डिफरेंट फ्रेमवर्क्स में मैं बताता हूँ आपको व्हाट आई हैव रिटेन आई विल जस्ट रीड इट आउट तो इसका जो पहला पैराग्राफ है 
वो मैं पढ़ देता हूँ आई थिंक दैट विल मेक थिंग्स वेरी क्लियर It says the fundamental difference between the Sanatana and the Abrahamic worldview is that of different frameworks in which these systems operate. The Sanatana system, in its essence, is an experiential framework that creates a knowledge system, whereas the Abrahamic systems belong to a belief framework. So, yeah, this is uh, experiential framework versus belief framework. In deference to commonplace usage, itself born out of a Western epistemology, we refer to both as religions. Even though Sanatana Dharma does not lend itself to the self righteous supremacist definition of religion, born out of a claim of God's exclusivist intervention into the affairs of humankind. In fact and practice, dharma is the very antithesis of religion. One is an open flowing river, the other is a pond bound from all sides. Another important difference in framework is that the entire corpus of the Sanatana system or Hinduism, which Swami Chinmaya Ananda called a library, is a description framework Whereas the limited one book and its associated corpus of Abrahamic religions is a prescription framework. So, these two points are here. Now you have uh, what is called the experiential versus belief and description versus prescription. At another level, the Sanatana is an open architecture framework operating with the underpinning of knowledge, whereas the Abrahamic religions operate in a closed architecture framework underpinned by belief ek uh, american main ek uh, american jo padriyon ka ek ek conference hota hai conclave hota hai aur main usse connected aapko ye question puchunga isi section pe wahan pe wo log uh, christianism islamism aur judaism ko recognize karte hain buddhism ko bhi recognize karte hain लेकिन हिंदुइज्म या सनातन धर्म को रिकॉग्नाइज नहीं करते इंक्लूडिंग नेटिव रिलीजंस आल्सो नेटिव कल्चर रिलीजंस आल्सो नहीं रिकॉग्नाइज करते तो मुझे एक बात बताइए कि जो डिफरेंस इन फ्रेमवर्क है हाउ डू यू हाउ डू यू थिंक कि हम लोग रिलीजन में भी फिट हो और धर्म में भी फिट हो हाउ डज इट हैव क्योंकि ये अमेरिका में रिकॉग्नाइज नहीं करते ये लोग इसलिए हिंदू पादरी को अगर because there are a lot of hindu priests working in the us army also there are around 1200 hindu priests in the us army today aur to jo americans jo sanatan dharm ki taraf aa rahe hain how they have to present as equal jaise vivek ramas swami ne bahut attempt kiya lekin hum log hum aur aapko mujhe hum log ko malum hai ki kai tab dharm hai sare ke sare kaliyug ke kai tab dharm hai so how do you how do you hum log usko kaise fit kare ya usko fit karne ki zarurat hai ya nahi hai देखिए विवेक रामा स्वामी इज अ पॉलिटिशियन सो ही हैज टू टॉक लाइक ए पॉलिटिशियन उसको क्रिश्चियन से वोट लेना है तो इसलिए उसको क्रिश्चियंस को ऐसा बताना पड़ेगा कि ओके व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट सनातन और हिंदुइज्म देन द वैल्यूज जूडियो क्रिश्चियन वैल्यूज आर द सेम व्हिच दे आर बेसिकली नॉट व्हाई दे आर नॉट इज एक्सप्लेनड इन द बुक बिकॉज़ द पॉइंट्स ऑफ कंपैरिजन आर मेनी एज आई हैव शोन Uh, there are as many as eight parameters on which comparison has been made and on which it has been shown that uh, the dharmic or the um, what we call the inquiry systems are totally different from the belief systems so dharmic versus abrahamic or inquiry system versus belief systems so as i said the first one was the different frameworks that second is the different ways of interpretations the third one is the different attitudes to scientific method fourth is different time concepts then fifth is the different logic concepts 
then sixth is different epistemology then seventh is different cosmology and then eighth is different eschatology or the death concepts so th there are as many as eight points of difference uh, on which the comparisons can be made and if you want only one if you say that, that okay give us one fundamental difference so that one fundamental difference is the time concept kal kal ke bare mein to hum logon ne kal sansar see what is sansar sansarati iti sansara that is one that is eternal that one never ceases that one never ends that sansarati iti sansara whereas for them it is finite time you know there is a, there is a beginning there is an end and here there is no beginning no end and a lot of other things for instance because it is in finite time that is why you get the concept of a rebirth the cyclical time the ever moving atma all, all, all these things the the inclusive the in the inclusion the inclusive uh, tendencies all these are functions of that uh, eternal time eschatology pe bhi aapne baat kiya because when they say rest in peace aur hamare yahan bolte hain aapki aage ki yatra sulabh ho aapki aage ki yatra shubh ho so uh, there is a difference over there so the how does the one life syndrome affect the longevity of the human civilization but the one life syndrome jo hai masiha syndrome so where does the sanatan dharma stand in terms of one life syndrome and also one masiha syndrome or the or the protector wo ek koi prophet aayega bacha lega where do you, what do you say on that sanju ji uh, i'm just uh, exiting this stream yard and joining again because that is very very disturbing i'm just not able to make out what you're okay. saying all right दोस्तों अभी जो हम लोग बात करें वापस जुड़ रहे हैं वो जो मेरा पूछने का मतलब ये था क्वेश्चन को कि किस तरह हम लोग जो ये बोलते हैं रेस्ट इन लाइफ रेस्ट इन पीस एक लाइफ का जो सिंड्रोम है वन लाइफ सिंड्रोम और ये मसीहा सिंड्रोम है देखिए हमारे सनातन धर्म में भी हमारे गुरु हैं आचार्य हैं जिनकी हम सेवा करते हैं और हमारे अनेक देवता हैं जिनकी हम सेवा करते हैं देवताओं को ही भूलना नहीं चाहिए लेकिन यहाँ पे कोई ऐसा सिस्टम नहीं है इन्होंने क्या किया कि सारे नेटिव कल्चर्स को इंक्लूडिंग सनातन धर्म को इन्होंने बाहर फेंक दिया अब ये लोग फंसे पड़े हैं कि अब शरीर माने या आत्मा माने कौन छोड़ के गया अगर मर गया तो कौन गया एंड सारे उग कर्मा उसी कॉन्शियसनेस पे आते हैं ये मेरा क्वेश्चन है संजय जी से Yes, yes. Yes. Now, now amazing. Everything is fine. Amazing. I'm happy. You are happy. So, Sanjay Ji, my question was that the one life syndrome is the disease, and the one Masiha syndrome is the disease. Masiha, who will save? One who will save a hero will save. All the comic theories are made. Superman has come. He man has come. All these things are made. So, how do you think that compares with anything, with us? With our Sanatan Dharma consciousness, Sanatan Dharma to Native Americans bhi follow karte hain. Same cheez hai. Paramatma, Atma, Bhumi, Ishwar ko belong karti hai. Same concept in Native Americans ka bhi. Ah, मुझे नहीं लगता कि it is exactly like that. वैसे तो हमारे भी गीता में कहा गया है कि यदा यदा ही धर्मस्य ग्लानिर भवति भारत. तो वो तो हमारे यहाँ भी कहा गया है. परित्राणाय साधूना विनाशाय च दुष्कृता धर्म संस्थापनाय संभवा युगे युगे तो वो संभवा युगे युगे भगवान बार बार अवतार लेते हैं ये तो हमारे यहाँ भी है लेकिन वहाँ जो मसीहा है वो मसीहा मैसेंजर है वो भगवान स्वयं नहीं है वो ऐसा क्यों है वो ऐसा इसलिए है कि उनकी एपिस्टमोलॉजी में जो भगवान है वो सर्वव्यापी नहीं है He is not all pervasive. Uh, it's not like you know <clears throat> that we uh, 
समम सर्वेशु भूतेशु समम सर्वेशु भूतेशु तिष्ठन्तम परमेश्वर ये तो उनके यहाँ नहीं है तिष्ठन्तम परमेश्वर समम सर्वेशु भूतेश क्योंकि दैट ही इज इनहेरिंग दैट ही इनहेर्स दी ब्रह्मन इनहेर्स इन एवरी बीइंग नॉट जस्ट ह्यूमन बीइंग एंड नॉट जस्ट इन एनिमेट बीइंग्स he inheres in every sentient and non sentient being ye to abrahamic concept hai nahi aap jante abrahamic concept is very limited it says that okay the um, god or allah or yahweh is all by himself he is the creator so this is a creationist theory that there is a separate creator and everything else is his creation and he does not inhere in his creation the creator and the creation of creation are separate so that is why because he cannot inhere he has to send some agent that agent is the prophet so that is the theory of the prophet or that is what is prophetism that is a claim to prophethood after all what is an ism ism is a claim and and, and that is why it, they label us as hinduism claim to being hindu what is the literal meaning of hinduism claim to being a hindu and uh, there is no christianism it is christianity and earlier there used to be a muhammadanism but now it is islam there is no muhammadanism there is no claim to muhammad's faith so it is also a very clever play on semantics you know that very play very clever play on semantics so that clever play on semantics also means that what you are trying to compare that okay you have savior sent so those saviors are prophets or agents that are sent that is why you know jesus saves jesus comes and saves how he saves nobody knows i mean you can't say it is it is a truism uh, that nobody can save by dying people can save only by killing others but he still manages to save so that is uh, the biggest mythology that goes around but then they call that as reality or history and they call our history as mythology but that is basically a power equation because they have wielded the power now for the last so 400 500 years so they have inverted everything and they have inverted the knowledge spectrum as well and uh, therefore the savior as an avatar and savior through prophet they basically cannot be compared because the epistemology is absolutely different no in the, the beginning logic is very different why he comes there because he uh, the prophet who comes to save he is basically there for a finite period according to him the universe is finite it is going to last only a few thousand years in fact the basic uh, negation of the prophetism is that every prophet has uttered something about how long the universe is going to be and he is going to be he is getting proved incorrect with every passing year you know that uh, there is a hadith by <clears throat> there is a hadith that says that uh, the world would come to an end of about what 100 years after uh, muhammad and uh, uh, as far as christians are concerned you know that uh, newton predicted it to be 1920 the end of time and uh, then uh, of course you had another prophet called fukuyama who predicted who said that end of history has occurred already so end of history also meant that end of time was coming then uh, they advanced to 2020 some of them some of these denominations said that 2020 would be the usse pehle 2012 bhi hua tha 2012 bhi hua tha usse pehle 2012 bhi hua tha hamare yahan bhi uske bahut ek brahma kumari sect hai hamare yahan they also predicted end of the world in 1984 nothing happen why nothing happen is because it cannot happen cannot happen it 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 cannot happen time as um, i have also mentioned in this book because now 
there is going to be a fundamental revolution in the theory of time and uh, this ever expanding universe now dr uh, professor subhash kak has come up with this theory uh, this theory of uh, e dimensionality applied to cosmology and this e dimensionality when it is applied to cosmology it shows that there is uh, nothing called your dark energy that is propelling the universe into an ever expanding mode uh, actually the universe is expanding then contracting and then expanding again which is fully in tune with our kalpa theory so kalpa that is the difference between the savior uh, complex or the savior syndrome of the abrahamic religion and the avataravad of the sanatan dharma because one Very comes good. the avatar comes to basically ensure that the cycle of time continue continues forever and the prophet comes a prophet comes in order to save human beings in order to ensure that the end of time is reached quickly ek aapne bahut important baat shuru mein boli thi about the belief versus experience and uh, 25th december we just passed and 25th december for some people 25th december is the day of satan satan ek and these people sometimes in the other non uh, sanatan dharma cultures uh, we see that they kind of demean pagan shaman and hindus are taught as shamanism in many universities that hindus are extension of shaman so i am seeing the titles of your book actually i want i'll urge the readers to get this book i am also going to get this book part 1 the comparison part 2 the sanatan umbrella so i'm still on the part 1 actually and in the part 1 you talked about cosmology which i uh, put it out in detailed research our cosmology is completely different than what they ever teach here completely different and so in the belief versus experience category how our hindus can understand that these people they when they believe in something they want to impose on others and when you seek for knowledge so belief is not knowledge and when you know you don't believe so how do you put it across to defend people who are native hindu sanatan dharma followers who are trying to defend against constant attacks by the western academics or even islamic academics because anti brahmanism is spread by them also No, it's very simple it's it's very very simple because uh, uh, whatever sanatan dharma is uh, saying it's based on observations is based on observations within and observations outside so there is an inner reality there is an outer reality so you experience the inner reality you express it you experience the outer reality and you express it now outer reality is verifiable by science and the inner reality is uh, verifiable only by uh, the highest accomplished saints and seers so that is where the other people that is the abrahamic people they are able to sow seeds of doubt but the point is that whatever they are saying where is that coming from if you look at their logic system or their epistemology So that epistemology says that whatever is written in the book is true whereas the indian epistemology places the pratyaksha pramana as the highest anything that is opposed to the pratyaksha pramana is not correct that is our whatever is said whatever brilliant expositions are made all of them need to be verified by pratyaksha pramana the pratyaksha pramana there is an inner pratyaksha pramana there is an outer pratyaksha pramana 
Now, whatever the Abrahamic are saying, they are not even giving the outer Pratyaksha Pramana. For instance, the earth is flat. Now, that earth is flat, if you, I don't know whether you know this, that in Islam there is a full fledged movement that actually advocates the flat earth theory. And that uh, I think there, it's, it's also there among Christians too. They advocate the flat earth theory only because it is written in the Bible. So whatever is written in the Bible has to be true. Whatever is written in the Quran has to be true. And whatever else your eyes see or your senses experience is actually incorrect. So that is the epistemology of the Abrahamic religions. That epistemology does not hold in the Sanatan Dharma, where it's, if you only compare it even in the outer reality, whatever you experience through your senses can be expressed and that uh, if it negates, you heard Shankaracharya also, that uh, if, if you uh, see something and that uh, negates, uh, negates the Shastras, then what you see is actually correct. You know, all our sages, all our rishis have said that. Anything that you experience internally, or the rishis have said that, okay, uh, if you do this, this happens. That you have to verify yourself. You don't have to believe it. And that is what they encourage as well. The whole of Bhagavad Gita is that, okay, what he is telling Arjuna, what Krishna is telling Arjuna is that, okay, this, this, this is this, this is this, this is this. But you have to experience it yourself. You have to understand. And in the end, he says that, okay, I have told you what I knew. Now you have to do. Gives him the choice. So that is the kind of openness and inclusivity that is the hallmark of the Sanatana Dharma or the Sanatana systems. And that is what is meant by the logic and epistemology of Sanatana Dharma. And that is why we say that it is fundamentally different from what you exp what you see in the Abrahamic uh, religions. You quoted Bhagavad Gita, Sar Dharman Paridyaja Mam Ekam Sharanam Praja, Am Tam Sar Bhabhibhya Moksha Ishami Mahasraja. Bhagavan says very clearly. But he says that after uh, uh, Arjun continues, when he gives him the choice, you know, uh, I think it's uh, 18.66 when he is given the choice. And uh, even after that, he actually bows to him and says that, okay, I am only going to be guided by you. It is then he says that, okay, sir, Dharmana Paritya Jamame Kamsharanam Raja, Aham Tvam Pape Bhyo Mokshi Yishyami Mahasucha. So it is uh, the choice that uh, Arjun has exercised. That uh, leads uh, Bhagwan to say this. Not otherwise. He doesn't impose himself. He gives him a choice. He exercises a choice. Then he says, okay, now that you come to my Sharana, then this is what I am going to do. And that's the biggest insurance policy for viewers. You know, this is a very good insurance policy is given. Coming to uh, one more question on the first part, because you said different ways of interpretations. So different ways of interpretations of various. So what is the basic thought process of the Abrahamic person? How does he impret, interpret his uh, belief and tries to, and how does a Sanatan Dharma person interprets? Because English is a very funny language. You're discussing in English because there are many Indian Americans and also many urban Indians who love to listen in English uh, also. So uh, when we say that in, like we are logically wired in a different way and that's why we excel also because we think from Sanskrit speak in English or in any other Indian language. How do you, how does the power of intellect work interpretation because our logic is different, their logic is different. See logic and ways of interpretation are two different things because I have dealt with the logic chapter uh, in a separate chapter. Yes, I saw. That. So uh, when we talk about the interpretations, is interpretation is because uh, uh, the Sanatana Dharma views this existence in three dimensions, and those three dimensions are what is called the 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 gross dimensions or what we call Adi Bhautik, the physical dimension, and uh, 
the uh, subtle dimension or what we call the David, uh, Adi Davik, the divine. And the, the third is, of course, the uh, beyond senses dimension, so the para dimensions, which we also call the Adhyatmic, that relates to Atma and Paripapa. So if you uh, want to interpret the story of Krishna, for instance, you can interpret in three ways. You can look at Krishna as Krishna Leela. Krishna Leela, as you see in the Bhagavata Purana, where he is a divine being, and then whatever happens around him is a Leela. You can interpret him the way I have written my, uh, my uh, <coughs> trilogy. You've read my trilogy. You've seen that, okay. I have to, uh, taken Krishna to be what we call a superhuman a human being. And then I have interpreted everything in that manner, what I have also called intellectualizing the divine story. So that is the physical way of interpretation. And third, of course, is the Adhyatmic way, uh, where all the divine Leelas, they become a symbolism. And then you go into the deepest recesses. And that is how even Bhagavad Gita, of course, is very much into the Adhyatmic realm. That is the highest expression of uh, Indian thought. So um, mostly you should only look at it uh, from the Adhyatmic point of view. But uh, the entire Krishna story can be interpreted in three different ways. That is why when people say, okay, okay, it's only a mythology. So what they're expressing, the Abrahamic mind is what they're saying is that, okay, this is a divine story. So this must be a mythology. They do not realize that actually there was a person, there was a historical Krishna also. And that is the physical story. And that is the uh, gross mind. And uh, that is because, as I have explained later on in the Sanatana umbrella, is because the Sanatana psychology is four-dimensional. You know this, that's uh, Vaikari, Madhyama, Pashyanti, and yes. Para. Whereas uh, the psychology, the Western psychology, ends at the third dimension itself. It doesn't lend itself to the fourth dimension at all. And uh, uh, you would be, uh, it would be interesting to know for everybody that uh, when uh, Freud and Carl Jung were framing their prognosis, uh, framing their theories, they actually came across it because a lot of their theories they have been taken uh, straight from the Indian psychology. And uh, they did come across this dimension of para with the system was such that that kind of a revolutionary theory they could not have exercised without taking the permission of the church. And when they went to the church with their theories, the church said, no, you remove this para dimension. There's nothing called adhyatma. You cannot have this union of Fatma and Paramatma. And that is why the Western theories are incomplete. As Dalai Lama said, I quoted the Dalai Lama here. He said that the Western psychology is like a, a kindergarten exactly. compared to Indian psychology. So that is the uh, fundamental difference in the interpretations. And you would see this all along. You look at the translations of the Vedas or the translations of the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, if you look at uh, Griffith's translation of the Veda, it is totally one dimensional. Whereas Yaska Acharya, who is the foremost uh, scholar of uh, the Nirukta Vedanga, he says very clearly that uh, every Vedic mantra has three dimensions. Every Vedic mantra has three dimensions. The Adi Bhautik, the Adi Daivik, and the Adhyatmik. Adhyatmik. And uh, you, I can tell you there are three different interpretations. So if you look at uh, translations like Griffith or you look at the translations of Arya Samaj, for instance, they will treat Agni as the sacrificial fire. Then you go to uh, somebody like Satavalekar and you look at uh, his translations. They are very much in the Adi Daivik realm where they will treat Agni as the leader. Agni as the uh, as the Neta, the Netritva Karta or in that sense a Bhagavan or a Devata. The, the one that leads. 
and uh, when you go into a translation by somebody like Sri Aurobindo, then you will find that he treats Agni as the consciousness. And uh, Yajna is that endeavor that takes you to the edge of that consciousness. That Yajna is basically that uh, effort that uh, takes your gross sensibility into that highest realm of consciousness. So these are the three ways you interpret the Vedas. And these three interpretations you will find very much common everywhere and especially if you have to go to the uh, Jnana Kanda. In the Vedas you have these three Kanda, the Karma Kanda, the Upasana Kanda and you have the, karma, uh, the Jnana Kanda. When you go to the Jnana Kanda then at that time you have to elevate yourself to the spiritual level. Unless you look at the Adhyatmic way then you cannot make sense out of the Upanishads. Otherwise, you can keep interpreting, interpreting them in the gross manner, in the Adi Bhautik manner, and uh, you completely uh, lose the essence of uh, those teachings. So these are the different ways of interpretation. Whereas in the Abrahamic way, only the literal interpretation is permissible. Anything else is not even permissible. Just as the church forbade Carl Jung from making any interpretation with regard to the para level, the para star of uh, uh, human psychology or the human mind. Similarly, they cannot allow you in their epistemology. The only proof is the proof of the book. There is nothing that can negate the proof of the book. Shabda Pramana is the only Pramana. Whereas for us, no Shabda Pramana is valid till it is corroborated by Pratyaksha Pramana. So that Patanjali, is the link. Patanjali also says the same thing. Viparyaya. He says, unless you quantify the Shabda Pramana, because Pramana is also a vritti, with an experience, then that Pramana never becomes manifest in your heart. Patanjali says that. Yes, ah. yes, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. That is there in the, I think, second or third Sutra itself. Shabda. Samadhi Pad, the, the, the first part, I think it's the third, the third or fourth sutra. Fourth shloka, yes, fourth sutra. Now, coming, you said uh, many, many important things I was noting down. Uh, the one question which really comes is, uh, and then I'll move on to the part two, part three, part four. Uh, we, I'll I'll suggest the viewers should get this book also to get all sides of it. Uh, I'll say one shlok. Avajananti mama mooda manushin tanumashritam param bhava majananto mama bhuta maishwaram. Yeah, very clearly, ninth chapter, 11th shloka. Krishna Bhagavan has said it. Now, in the uh, if you look at the uh, another part of the ninth chapter, towards the end, he says, Manamana Bhakto Madhyaji Maam Namaskuru. He says that. So there should be one version of truth, which because sometimes when we talk, you and I are talking, and it is maybe appearing very flowery. And Adi Sankaracharya's uh, you know famous prayers are here. I printed them out for this discussion. He says, Bhaj Govindam, Bhaj Govindam, Bhaj Mudamate, Samprapte, Sanditi Kale, Nahi, Nahi Rakshati, Dukran Karani. So he says to Vyakran, he's speaking to Vyakran, and his disciple's name is Vyakran. So he says to Vyakran, and he's using very strong words, and he's trying to simplify everything. Bhaj Govindam, Bhaj Govindam, Bhaj Govindam, Bhaj Mudamate. So, so there must be one unity factor also where one can simplify for Hindus. That yes, this is the path you take. This is Adi Sankaracharya's words, 33 shloka. And uh, so, what do you say on that so that people don't get confused sometimes? Because uh, many rishis, when they talk, they're talking at a different level altogether. Ashtavakra is talking at a different level. De definitely, look at the uh, all our uh, what is called the uh, saints of the Bhakti Kal they realized that uh, this is not going to be the only way because to reach the highest level where the rishis were, the rishis are treated as drishtas or the seers of those mantras. So they 
trained themselves to reach that level to be able to see those mantras and to transcribe them now it is not possible for everybody to reach there and that is why they say that okay now uh, as you've seen in the ramacharit manas it says that okay the kaliyuga is going to come so what what should be the way in kaliyuga and uh, it is also beautifully expressed in natya shastra bharat muni is natya shastra what does it say that okay that kaliyuga is going to come the treta is ending now there will be dwapar and after that there will be kaliyuga so what should be the way in kaliyuga so for kaliyuga is said okay the kaliyuga you have to that now devise this uh, method of communication that is theater and all the communication has to has to be done through symbolisms through katha uh, through um, uh, your uh, acting uh, through music these are the ways through which the communication will be done in kali yuga so that is that is the that is the way that uh, uh, our rishis the i would call them rishis only the all the saints of the bhakti kal and those bhakti kal rishis actually communicated all this beautifully to the masses who were not well schooled in those dharmic uh, interpretations or in that language but they still managed to communicate to communicate it to them and to keep the dharma going the tulsidas ji did a wonderful work also in the bhakti uh, Actually, bhakti period is still going on. Krite dhyayate vishnu tretaya majato makhe dvapari paricharyam kalau tad hari kirtana. So bhakti kal never ends, uh, we can say, from the beginning of the creation. So uh, my one, you said many important things in, in your discussion. And in your book also you mentioned the, the vak, kosh, chakra manifestation of Brahman. And, and we... Patanjali Yoga Sutra, we talk about Vritti and viewers who want to know Praman, Praman is a Vritti, Praman, Viparya, Vikalpa, Smriti, Nidra. These are the five Vritti. And yes. these are the underlying terms of the mind. Because chitta, they don't know Chitta, Chitta, Vritti, Nirodascha. They don't know Chitta. So, uh, so Vritti is a, it's like a PhD for most of the Western Abrahamic concepts. But our Sadhu focus on the Vritti. Because then mind it becomes in um, Satuguna. So now the guna also you need to learn because guna also is not just qualities, it's a quality of the nature. So these layers, when you mentioned, they're very important terms and people need to know them also. Vaka, Kosha, Chakra. So the Brahman, when I see a Western author, first of all, I'll request the readers or anyone who is, wants to get this book, stop reading any Western translation of anything related to Sanatan Dharma. And students who are part of the Harvard, Yale, stop learning about Sanatan Dharma or Hindu culture from a person who goes, who is a pastor also. Like the dean of Hindu studies is is uh, is uh, Clooney. So don't don't even Frank Clooney. Don't even go there. Don't even study his translations. He has done something on the uh, Ram Ramanujacharya three steps. Don't even read that. That is that is going to confuse you further. He himself is a Christian pastor. So now, so what do you say about these layers? And then I'll come to the nine darshan, which is a very important topic. You have done so much. Niguna Saguna, Hindutva versus Hinduism debate, understanding Hindu symbolism. So the layers we want to touch upon. What do you what do you describe about the Vak Kosh? Probably we'll have to do 10 shows on this book. <laughs> I know it's already 45 minutes. So, uh, uh, I think that second part we can do for <laughs> some other time. Otherwise, maybe you can just explain a little bit, then we'll come into it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and I'll, take, I'll, play, I'll play Vaz Vivas. I'll, 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 I don't think I'll have time for detailed explanation, but I'll just uh, spell it out. What is called Vak is the. Um, the, in, the the psychology, or as, as I mentioned, Vakari, Madhyama, Pashyanti, and Para. Then Kosh, we know all the Pancha Kosh. <clears throat> we know the Pancha Kosh, and then we, the Chakras, the, you know the Sapta Chakras or the Ashta Chakras, as they are called. And the manifestations of Brahman, as I said, that Eko Vashi Sarva Bhutanta Ratma 
एकम रूपम बहुधा यह करो थी अब ये जो है ना दिस लॉजिक दैट आई एम टेलिंग दी एब्रामिक्स नो बडी इज एबल टू आंसर इज दैट ओके व्हाई इज इट दैट योर ऑमनी पोटेंट गॉड यू कॉल द गॉड और अल्लाह और यावे सो दैट इज ऑल पावरफुल ही कैन डू एवरीथिंग सो इफ ही कैन डू एवरीथिंग व्हाट प्रिवेंट्स हिम फ्रॉम अज्यूमिंग अ ह्यूमन फॉर्म व्हाट प्रिवेंट्स हिम from going into a murti is it a self imposed restriction or is he frankly incapable of doing it now they will never admit that he is incapable of doing it but then they are not able to explain that if he is not incapable of doing it why is she so jealous you call him that okay that he is again all powerful all knowing everything he has all uh he then he says that okay he is nirakar but he is not nirgun it's very funny that the abrahamic god is without form seemingly without form but he has all the attributes he is a jealous god ten commandments in the ten commandments he says that, uh, that yeah yehova uh, is telling moses that uh, i am a jealous god so what is jealousy we treat these as uh, uh, weaknesses the shadari kaam krodh moh kaam krodh lobh moh mad matsarya okay when then uh, when we talk about uh, ravana's 10 heads then we add four more raag dvesh ahankar krurata these are human weaknesses so how are these human weaknesses manifested in somebody as a level of god have we called, called uh, are there hierarchies because uh, for hinduism there is one supreme that uh, there is one mool tattva okay everyone agrees now that mool tattva earlier all different sampradayas used to call that mool tattva vaishnavas would call him mahavishnu the shaivas would call him sada shiva the shaktas would call as, as uh, uh, devi or uh, even different shakta sampradayas somebody would call kali or durga or chandi then uh, Uh, in fact if you read the durga saptashati so you can see that okay all the devis are all coming from one source then uh, you also had those uh, other uh, sampradayas ganapatya kaumarika saur these are the six main sampradayas now uh, all these are names of brahman carved out by different sampradayas you have been in iskon iskon says that uh, okay it is krishna who is the supreme consciousness and all of them all of them they have a trinity brahma vishnu mahesh they are all number uh, that is second level brahma vishnu mahesh are second level to brahman but the brahman can be mahavishnu sada shiva or Uh, durga or whatever name you give there is a uh, this your uh, swami narayan sampradaya who says that sahajanand is the brahma swami sahajanand is the brahma and then there are brahma vishnu mahesh a lot of them you know but uh, everybody agrees that there is one supreme essence one mool tattva you can call it brahma you can call it by any other name so that is that is level number 1 then the trinity what is called the trigunatmak prakriti the trigunatmak prakriti is level 2 and devatas are at num- all the devatas which are basically the points of consciousness in your brain are at number 3 and our friends in the abrahamic religions never tire of comparing their god to these level 3 devatas of ours 
so what is the point i mean why are they feeling so uh, why 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 do they bring their level of their god down so much that is my basic question actually to all my abrahamic friends sanjay ji hamare show pe log 1.5 ghanta sunte hain theek hai lambe lambe shows hote hain so aap jitna marzi khul ke bol sakte hain kuch abhi nahi but i i i respect your time also so isliye uh, i will keep it as per your wish jitna lamba aap karna chahe then so, up, i think we have to finish within an hour okay so one main i'll take questions from the viewers also aur main ek common theme mein dekh raha hu sabhi log mujhe bol rahe hain ki uh, translations ke upar aur veda scripts were so badly transformed aur books ke upar uh, hindi rupa like people are asking more about those things ki how this is translated or or where translations can be there and also the correct version of uh, the concepts explained to is book mein aapne kafi acche attempt kiye hain sare uh, jo uh, part 3 mein aapne uh, part 3 is uh, mai i will come to i will make different shows on each of the parts because it is important for us to uh, to discuss these things openly without any and I, i'll also bring counter points also on each of these areas so the abrahamic conceptions or principles in origin us pe bhi kafi hai lekin ek mujhe bahut अच्छा लगा इसमें इसमें थोड़ा सा पॉइंटर दीजिए नेक्स्ट शो में हम लोग विल टेक इट डिटेल इंट्रा अब्राहमिक कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इसके बारे में हमने कभी भी ध्यान नहीं दिया क्योंकि ये कभी एक दूसरे के साथ नहीं रह सकते प्रेसबिटेरियन लूथरन के साथ नहीं रहेगा मॉर्मन विल नॉट लाइक द क्रिश्चन कैथोलिक विल नॉट लाइक द मॉर्मोन एंड द मॉर्मोन वर इन द उन्होंने सारे कैथोलिक्स को बाहर फेंक दिया एंड द मैक्सिको डजन लाइक द क्रिश्चन क्योंकि वो कैथोलिक कंट्री है तो ये तो इनके बीच में क्रिश्चियंस के विरुद्ध क्रिश्चियंस के अंदर ही करीब डेढ़ हजार डिफरेंट सेक्स होंगे वो एक यूनिटी यूनिफॉर्म यूनिटी नहीं है और एंड ऑल ऑफ देम आर रिकॉग्नाइज इन द वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज एज सेपरेट रिलीजन सो लोग बोलते हैं कि एक कंट्री अमेरिका में एक ही रिलीजन नहीं अमेरिका हैज मोर देन वन फिफ्टी रिकोगनाइज रिलीजन और सेम इन द इस्लाम ऑल्सो इस्लाम में भी काफी ब्रॉड ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज है सो जस्ट कमेंट ऑन वन दिस थिंग एंड देन वी विल एंड द शो lot of comment lot of i don't abrahamic conflicts actually there's uh, basically uh, it is the exclusivist claim to truth that causes these uh, conflicts within the abrahamic fold whereas you can see i have mentioned so many sampradayas but there is actually no conflict because all paths are valid <clears throat> followed in practice all over so of course uh, we have some you know uh, discordant notes here and there but largely largely you know, within the sanatan fold all paths are valid uh, it is only lately uh, in, under the influence of the british that you got some abusive sects coming but uh, even they are fringe okay but the entire mainstream uh, i would say that uh, Ninety percent. If you leave aside some two three percent on the left and two three percent on the right, then the entire mainstream uh, says that all paths are valid. Uh, the only trouble is that when they say these all paths are valid, then they also start treating those as valid who actually do not conform to the dharmic path at all. So dharma is valid, but adharma is not valid. Sarva dharma samabhav is fine. but a dharma a dharma samabhav is not fine that distinction has to be made that is why i had to do this comparison and a uh, uh, lot of books are there on comparative religion in the west but uh, this attempt is rarely made from our side and even if it is are made it is not very popular luckily this book has become a big hit on amazon india right now it is at number 38 number 38 among all amazon books not in its category in its category it is number 1 of course but in among all books it's there in the top 100 books at number 38 so that means that uh, people do see the need or people do uh, connect with this topic 
that that is that is there but then uh, you mentioned this intra abrahamic conflict is because of this exclusivity that everybody is sports and everybody says that okay that well, my path is the only valid path okay my god is the only god okay my book is the only book my saint is the only saint so these are the reasons for intra abrahamic conflict my prophet is the last prophet there is no other prophet after him they said okay christian said no jesus is the last prophet and jews said no moses is the last prophet so th these are the reasons for the intra abrahamic conflicts and of course the jews christian conflict is of course very much <laughs> interesting in the sense that they talk about blood libel <laughs> hitler was actually exacting blood libel revenge for the death of jesus when jesus was a jew he was killed by the romans but they were exacting they have been exacting revenge from the jews so all these uh, funny things are there that is why i had to write specifically about the intra abrahamic conflicts in one of gold glory and god also i covered judaism issues uh, so viewers thank you all for joining today and uh, you know i could not go through the entire gamut which i want to cover but i will do multiple shows on these topics because these are concerning to our daily lives nowadays and thank you sanjay ji for joining today and all the viewers who enthusiastically participated and please do like share and widely share and let us know your feedback so that we know and i to those who are in the us or uh, in the west this book is available on garuda.us okay g a r u d a dot u s so you can buy this book from garuda dot u s and those who are of course in india it's very much available on the on on garuda as well as on the amazon and right now it's in the top hundred of amazon at number thirty eight as at this moment so already people are ordering uh, there is one I ordered the book Sanatan Vedic Dharma has ordered the book actually. So thank you, thank you very much, Sanjay ji, and all the people who are asking for Hindi edition will be out very soon. I'm sure it's going to be out very soon. Uh, I have a great problem. I have a great problem that for anybody to be able to <laughs> translate into Hindi, he has to know about Sanatan Dharma. He has to know about uh, the terms that are used in various other religions. So all these, uh, all this is required. So uh, I have been searching for such a person. I'm not finding one. Sanjay ji, same problem I have with all the books I've written. Unless they understand, study, then only we, they can translate. I wrote it to debunk mythology in the West. There is no comparison there. So, but thank you all the viewers for watching. Or Jai Shri Ram, Ram Mandir Khulne Wala hai. Please, abhi big celebrations are going to begin. Participate in those celebrations and don't become like Sita Rams of the world who are ignoring the celebration. You actually follow Jai Sita Ram, Jai Sita Ram. So, so join us there also. And uh, in the US also, we'll have celebrations in San Diego and many of our campuses when the Ram, open, Ram Temple opens up. And for many Americans, it's very difficult to come to India. It's too expensive for them. We'll try to see how many we can take with us after the opening ceremony. Because the opening ceremony is impossible to go for anybody uh, unless they have prior appointments and prior bookings, actually. So thank you all very much. Jai Shri Ram. And I will see you in the next show. Jai Jagannath. Jai Shri Ram. Jai Shri Ram.